In this graph, we want to look at how we can utilize spirometry to show the differences between chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, such as emphysema, and chronic restrictive, restrictive pulmonary diseases, such as fibrosis. COPDs tend to increase the resistance to airflow. CRPDs, caused by scarring, tend to reduce compliance, the distensibility of the lung. If we take a normal person without pulmonary disease, shown here in the red line, and we have them breathe into a spirometer, right? Here's their tidal volume. And then if we have them breathe in maximally, and then exhale maximally as fast as they possibly can, and then they could go back to tidal breathing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab from where they fully inhaled, right? Utilizing their inspiratory reserve, to where, they're, where they fully exhaled over three seconds, right, and utilize their expiratory reserve. This means that they will have moved their vital capacity in a forced manner as fast as possible. If we grab that section of the graph and then uh, re-graph it down here, just sort of inverting it, we end up with these traces, right? Our expiratory volume moved over one, two, and then three seconds. In the normal patient, what we find is that their expiratory volume over one second is quite good. They actually move a relatively large fraction of their vital capacity, right? This maximum volume moved uh, in one second. It's actually about 80% or even a little bit higher than that. Now, in the person with COPD in the blue line here, COPD tends to cause excess mucus production and other effects that tend to increase the resistance to airflow. And so what we see is that their FEV is now much lower, right? They can't move that air as quickly. Now we notice that they can move a similar vital capacity, assuming they're the same anatomical size as this normal patient, right? But what we see is that their FEV1 as a ratio of FVC is now significantly reduced. That's an indicator that we've got an obstruction to our air movement and it's gonna take longer to move that volume. Finally, in our CRPD person here that has fibrosis and scarring of the lung, they have reduced compliance. Well, compliance equals the change in lung volume over a change in pressures. In other words, the driving pressure for air movement. If compliance is large, it means we get good air movement, large change in volume, for a very small change in pressure. In other words, the lung is very distensible. When the lung is scarred, this is reduced dramatically, right? Because we lose that distensibility of the lung. And so what we find is that they can move air quite rapidly, right? Their FEV1 as a percent of their FVC, right? Here's their FVC, is still very high, 80% or higher. However, we've dramatically reduced their vital capacity due to that scarring of the lung. And again, when we have an obstructive disease such as emphysema, the COPD, often we get dueling effects where obstructive diseases are generally restrictive as well over time. And so initially it might only be affecting the ratio of FEV1 over FVC, but over time we also see that um, it becomes restrictive as well and our compliance will fall.